Hey everyone, Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art here again to paint this adorable wood cutout for you. It's great for spring, it's great for Easter. Here's a little picture of it all done. And um, we're gonna hop in and paint that. I've been want I've got lots of fun uh, cutouts for you, but this one is so darn cute. I thought we would paint it up together today. It's 3D. So you've got the um little pieces that come come off and we'll glue them on afterwards. But I love the fact, I love the little eyeglasses on him and I love the fact that it's 3D. So thank you guys for joining me. I'm just popping in um, just on the fly here because I've really been dying to paint this and it's a beautiful spring day and I'm kind of excited about spring. So let's let's jump right in. I'll show you how to do it. I have kits available. If you want, um, I have the wood cutouts, all the pieces, the paint, the brushes, everything you need, plus this video. If you would like, um, just uh, comment, Bunny, in the in the in the in the um, comments, and I'll send you the info if you're interested. Uh, locally, I can deliver them, and I can certainly ship them to you too. So, the great thing about these cutouts is. As you can see, the lines are etched in. You barely feel them, but they are enough to give you a little guide to go by. So it really makes it easy peasy for you. So say hi when you come on so I know who's here watching. I'd love to uh, know where you're watching from and if you're excited about spring too. So yeah, I'm gonna jump right in. And it's just the acrylic paints that we always use for our projects with our canvases and our wood cutouts. Just the little craft paints. Doesn't really matter what brand you're using. I kind of just go by what color I like. Could be the tube acrylics. It could be these in the little bottles. Uh, I'll show you the brushes as I go along. It's pretty simple. You can use whatever you have. You can certainly mix up your colors. You don't have to paint the same as I do. I love it after class when we all share our finished projects and we see all the different colors everybody's used. So, all righty. I'm going to, uh, I have access to your comments here. So any questions as we go, let me know. So we're going to just jump in and I think I'll paint the white of the bunny first. And then I'll just, it's really like paint by number. Seriously, that's how easy it is. And I am just going to paint the white part first, just using these acrylic brushes, which I really like. They're inexpensive. They're easy to find. They do the job. Just take care of them and they will last for you. And the acrylic paints, as we've talked about, are a little transparent sometimes. So we'll put two coats if we need better coverage. So no worries. But but always, always um, let your first coat dry before you go and attempt to put a second coat, because otherwise you're just taking off that paint that you put on and it's really um, unnecessary. So just let it dry good and then you can paint a second coat. And you can see how these little lines are just kind of giving me a guide. My brush almost just brushes up against them and, and it's really easy to find uh, what colors you're painting where. So there. Hey Patty, I um, sent your leprechaun this morning. You'll get it tomorrow. I apologize. I don't know how that slipped my mind, but uh, he's really a fun project. You're going to love him. He could be out for the, for the whole month of March. And uh, this guy, I was thinking Easter, but really it could be any, any, just a spring deco decoration too. So this is just a piece of hard board. And what I do is I um, just glue on a sawtooth hanger afterwards on the back to hang him. You could certainly uh, glue a piece of twine, a piece of ribbon, whatever you'd like. I would usually use like the E6000 glue. That really will glue just about anything and it's pretty permanent. So you have no worries about it coming off. And it's just fun for me to hop on here and have some of you guys to paint with. Instead of painting alone, we can chat while we paint. And it's just nice to have company. This guy, I, I'll show you some of the other wood pieces. I've got some new ones in that aren't even on the page yet that I'll put up. They're smaller. This guy's 18 inch. I have some little 12 inch pieces that are, that are great for a smaller space or for the kids to paint. They just came. I'm unpacking them and I will put those on and show you what those look like. Any of them are available in kits. I'll put that together for you with all everything you need, paints, brushes. Uh, if you have your paints already and your brushes, even better, I can just uh, send you the wood piece. So whatever you need, just, just message me or put in the comments. Even after this class is done, I follow the comments and I answer your questions. So if you are watching this uh, later on, don't, you know, even though it's not live, do put your questions and I can answer those for you. He is adorable though. I just love the little glasses. 
Yes, I have to get ready for Easter because can you believe it's a week and a half away? Jeez, I keep saying I'm going to be so ahead of it. I'm going to get an early start on the next holiday. And we finished up with St. Patrick's Day and said, oh, great. Now we'll start Easter. And before you know it, Easter's on the 4th, which, geez, Louise, that's fast. I do love Easter, though. When the kids were all little, I was the uh, Easter hunt master and not just hiding the eggs, but I would devise a different theme every year and I would do a big scavenger hunt. And sometimes it involved um, skeins of yarn leading to things. Sometimes it involved like clues. Sometimes inside if the weather was cold, we had the kids running all around the house and uh, more often than not, even if it was chilly, we'd be outside. So I do love Easter. Of course, all the kids are grownups now. Still love a good Easter egg hunt though. Hi, Tina. I'll send you the info for this if you, um, uh, if you are interested in the kit, you can even just send me a direct message with your address and I'll let you know um, what the shipping will be or if I can deliver that for you or pick up, uh, depending on where you're located. I'm happy to do that. So darn cute, this guy. And they are available in different sizes. I chose the 18 inch for this one because he's just on um, hanging out on your door. You'd be able to see him well from the street and he's pretty adorable. So I think the little one would be a little too small. And can you see how easy it is to paint around the glasses and, and the other pieces that you're going to be painting a different color? Pretty easy. And where this is white, you don't have to be too super duper careful. If you hit the nose or the glasses or something afterwards, well, first of all, the glasses are dimensional. It would cover any boo-boos here. And we can always paint like the nose over it too. So no worries about that. Boy, we have people jumping on right on the spur of the moment here. So glad to see you all here. Thank you. And we've got to start thinking of some other spring projects. I'm going to put my class schedule together this week, and I think we'll do some tulips and some... I'm going to jump on and do another little Easter Bunny canvas painting a few people have inquired about. And even when I jump on unexpectedly like this, remember, it, if you miss it, it's not a problem. It's right on the page. Afterwards, I always upload it to my YouTube channel too. So if you went to um, Tinker's Cart Art YouTube channel, follow me there. You'll see us pop on live, and you'll also see all the classes that we've done already. And I'm always open to suggestions about classes that you might be interested in. So feel free to throw some suggestions my way. Appreciate it. Anybody working on any projects of, of themselves for spring? Anything going on? Any paintings or wreaths? Wreaths? I just saw a wreath actually now is out on a walk and uh, with just, just enough, not overly done with some little eggs on it. And really cute. I need a wreath for my door. And like I said, you can make him a different color bunny if you wanted to do them all pink. Or I'm doing yellow down here, but you can certainly change that to something else. Match your decor. And then when these are done, what you can do is for a finish, if you're going to hang it outdoors, you might want to put a finish on it. Although acrylic paint is pretty sturdy. It's really not going to not going to come off. But you could spray it if you want a, a matte finish or a high gloss. I use the uh, Mod Podge spray, but you could use Krylon, any kind of a finish sealer finish. Um, you could use a spray or a brush on. I use the Mod Podge brush on sometimes. And it just gives it a nice shine and it protects it. And it might be a good idea if you're going to hang it outside. And so you see, I've got my first coat of white on there. And it is a little streaky, and it has dried where I started. So I'm going to quickly go back and just put a second coat on that white uh, area, just to make it a little more solid coverage. What's great about these guys, too, the edges where it's been laser cut and they're dark, you don't have to paint all the little edges. That would take forever. You just paint the top parts. That's all you need to do. He'd be kind of cute hung with a wire with a bow on it, It'd be fun. I've been painting, painted too, too many of these wood projects and lately I've got quite a few that I'm dying to work on. They're so fun. I've got a cute little chick and an egg, which I'll, I'll show you and uh, I'll put on the page. And if there's anything that interests you, feel free to just to message me or, or comment and I'll find that and uh, give you the info, the scoop on that. Yeah, so I will do my schedule this week for our canvas painting classes. I know some of you paint the canvas with me. 
Um, and so we'll do some new classes. Tina, do you have a site with all the products? Tina, I don't. I keep meaning to sit down and put them all in one place. But I'll have these projects for a little while, and then I'll have something else. Uh, so they're always on Facebook. If you look on Facebook, you'll see them. And when I get a second, I will put them all on one page for you. It's just been on the fly. And, you know, I, I have a dozen or so. I sell them. Then I pick out something else. But certainly inquire when you see something you like, and I can get, get it for you. And I will, if you follow me on Facebook, um, click that little follow button or on the live you're at now on the lower left, I think there's a little bell for alerts so that whenever I go live, you'll be notified and you will always see all the new things I'm doing. And I do send out emails too. So if you're not on my email list, feel free to message me your email address and I'll add you to my list so that you don't miss any of the fun that we have here at Tinker's Cart Art. This is sort of a new little venture. I painted uh, paint nights uh, classes I've been teaching for years, usually, you know, traipsing around to all the bars and the restaurants and private parties. And, and then with, with, the, with being closed down a little bit, you know, we have not been out doing those parties, which I really miss. I love painting here with you guys. It's better than nothing, but I do look forward to getting out again and painting with you in person. So the virtual thing is a bit new to me. So I know we've had some technical glitches and it's taken a while for me to get it all down. It's all coming together. I hope you guys enjoy the uh, classes, and I do, do, do really appreciate your feedback on how it's going. Appreciate you following me and jumping in and watching. And when I pop on like this, or even in the scheduled classes, you don't have to always be all ready and have to paint. You can just watch and chat and ask questions, and then always rewatch. That video stays up. You can you can access that anytime. You can stop and start it if you need to. So don't feel like oh I missed it. I didn't have my paint ready. Don't worry about that. So when you get, if you want a kit of like this here, it comes with like, of course, a little photo. On the back, uh, if there's a video made for the project, I have a QR code that will bring you right back here to this video. And it comes with, like I said, your paints and your brushes and everything you need to complete the project. So if you're not a painter and you want to try it and get into it, great way to jump into it. You don't have to go out and buy all the paints. But if you have the paints, Again, I can just supply you with the, the video code and the photograph and the wood piece. There. I think that's pretty good coverage. What do you think? Let's take a look. Yeah, that looks great. Now, I know I nag you about your brushes all the time. And I tell you, I don't spend a lot on my brushes. A set of three of these little um, brushes I get at Job Lot for like $2.99. They're great. They last a long time. But you have to rinse them off after you've use them dry the water off good because you don't want the paint or the water down in the ferrule because that's what will destroy your brush if it sits in water and or in paint so just try, take a second to rinse your brush out as you go and your brushes will last a long time for you i'm going to do the middle of the ears and the pink nose now sometimes with a piece like this i'll work top to bottom so that I'm not putting my hand, I won't do the yellow now and then put my hand in it. So we're going to kind of work that way. And Tina, this one is $40. That's the kit with the wood cut out all the little pieces, the um, QR code and the photo, as well as the paint and the brushes. Now, if you have the paint and brushes, um, I can price that out less just for the wood cutout for you. And I got some pink paint here, but remember, if you're just working with your primaries, you can mix your colors. You could use red and white, get a nice pink. I happen to have enough paint to outfit everyone. So I'm using pink, but I want a little lighter. So I'm going to just mix it with some white to whatever shade you like. You just, it's all, you know, kind of look at it and get an idea of what you like. I wanted it a little lighter than that. I sort of mix it on the fly. I don't mix a a lot of paint up. I don't mind when it's a little bit different shades. I think that looks kind of interesting and fun. And again, you can see it's a little light. It's a little see-through, but I'm going to go ahead, cover it, and then we're just going to put a second coat if we think it needs it. And again, I like the pieces that have the etching on them, the laser etching. It's as a guide. You don't have to trace your design on. You don't have to guess where it's going. It's really pretty cinchy. And you can see that I move my piece upside down and sideways and whatnot just to make it a little easier. I don't think I could just paint it flat like this and have it the way I want it. So I'm just kind of scooching it around different ways. This guy needs a name. I don't know what he's going to be named. Any suggestions, throw them in, but I gotta have a funny, funky name. I love his little glasses. You could do those little glasses. We're going to paint them like this, like a little leopard print. 
but wouldn't it be fun? You could do stripes and stars and stripes or polka dots or use your imagination. Don't always try to have it look just like mine. If we all painted exactly the same, it would be a very boring world. And I have to tell you, if I paint this twice, if I paint this next week again, it's going to look nothing like this one. It's going to be different. So don't worry that, oh, it doesn't look just like yours. It doesn't just look like Mary's. It doesn't look like anybody else's. You want it to be your own. Okay, we'll do this little bit of ear here, this little insert, and then we'll do his nose, his or hers. This is going to be a girl. She's got those funky glasses. So she needs a name. We'll think of something before we're done here today. And what do we have coming up after Easter and spring? We've got spring things, but summer, I can't wait. We have some fun ocean scenes planned and some waves and some beach and really fun summer things. And then for the cutouts, we'll have some Uncle Sam maybe, right? Fourth of July, we could do Memorial Day, some flag pieces, throw out some ideas. I'd love to see what you want to see. I want to do all the things, but you might have some ideas of particular holidays or seasons that you want to cover. I'm working on a big porch leaner now. You know, the big five or six foot pieces of wood that you can actually just get cut at Home Depot or wherever. I've got a cool stencil for welcome, but then for the O, we're going to do all the different seasons and whatnot with a little cutout like this to fit in where the O goes. I just kind of started planning it last night. So uh, follow me along and you'll be the first to see that when it's available. That'd be fun. It's going to have like a little Velcro on the O and you can pop on a shamrock for Patty's Day and a candy corn for you know halloween and a leaf for fall so we're going to have fun with that it's going to be a lot of little pieces to paint so it'll be a nice ongoing project something that you could pick up and then each month paint whatever's appropriate for the next month there's, there's loads of little uh, cutouts you can pick what you like or do or do all of them because i'm always like all the things I'll do all the things And every time I do a project, I always want to change it up, add and, and, and take things away. We did, I don't know who painted maybe with me yesterday, we did a little spring lamb and I ended up putting eyeglasses on mine. But then we had people add bows to their, to their hair, to their head, or a scarf around their neck. So whenever you see a pattern or something that you like, remember, you can use your imagination and really just change it up any which way you like. All right, so I really don't need to paint these bits because I am going to um, glue on uh, the glasses, although we need the white in the middle, don't we? We do. Okay, so let's get a little white back in there. We missed it when I did my first go round, but the white's going to be around the eyes. You don't have to be really careful because we're gluing that little black eyeball right on top there. We just want to get the white in up to where the glasses frame is going to be. So we'll do that, and then when that's dry, we'll do another co quick coat. And again, just go back as many times as you need to get it to be as much coverage as you like. So there we are. We've got that little bit. Next is his little scarf, the flowers. Then we'll do the yellow down here. So again, I'm going to just rinse my brush off there. And this is a little bright. I'm going to maybe tone that um, yellow down when I'm doing this one. And, the, and I don't like the darkness of the leaf. I'm going to do it brighter. Okay, so the little scarf. I am going to paint that um, like a blue turquoise. Again, paint whatever color you like. Um, I love turquoise, and I love it with pink. And these this color uh, palette I really like. And I think the little leopard print really pops for the glasses. So that's pretty cool. And again, it's a little translucent, but okay, just let it dry and just put another coat or two on. So about some of the supplies, if you have any questions, let me know. But I use, like I said, the acrylic um, synthetic brushes. I like a variety of flats because with this flat brush, you can get a nice wide stroke. But when you are using it on the edge, you can get a really thin line too. There's a lot of versatility to those. And I'll always have some rounds. We'll use the round brushes afterwards for the little detail bits. If you have big, big areas, I'm always going on about these, but for something that you're painting, like a canvas or a piece of wood that's big, these two inch chip brushes that are, gosh, you get them at the dollar store even, they're pretty inexpensive. They're great to have for, uh, they give you good texture because they're kind of rough and ready and you can use them for texture and they can use them for canvas painting and stenciling and 
these wood cutouts. They're really kind of cool. I'm going to go to a little brush now because I have, see this little spot right here is part of the scarf. And I couldn't really do it with that big square. So I'm just going to do this little area here. And then I'm going to hop on and go and do some of the rows um, and, well, some of the leaves. The rose is a dimensional piece that's going on top. We could paint those as we go to and let them dry. They might need a few coats. Okay. So that's that. We'll rinse these brushes off. And when that dries, we'll do a quick little coat. I got a tiny boo-boo, and I bet you don't even see it from there. But I just got a little bit of the turquoise on the white. So just touch those little spots up as you go. It's not a hard thing. Great thing about these acrylic paints is you can touch up anything. And if you need to, after it dries and there's a little problem, alcohol, just regular um, rubbing alcohol will take off any little, imperf you know, any little dried uh, acrylic paint. I use it if I get it someplace it shouldn't be and, and whatnot. So I'm going to do that. Got a little thing there. All right. So let's let that dry. I might go back and quickly do another coat of pink on his nose. And then see the little cheeks? They're very light, like little blush. I'll show you how to do that. That's a pretty simple simple little trick too. And let's just get this nose one more coat. Just to get a little better coverage. And I'm going to show you a little trick where this is brown. I want to paint this yellow. Yellow is a very translucent color. If I go straight on with my yellow, it, it will not cover well. It'll take coat after coat. So I'm going to base coat it with it with some white or some yellow in a lot of white. If you add white to any of the colors, you'll get it'll add a little opaque. It'll be opaque, a little more opaque, and it covers much better for you. I think those ears are okay. Um, white's still a little wet, so we're going to let that dry a bit. But I think what we'll do while we are waiting, let's paint some of these little bits and pieces. So let me just move him aside for a sec. The little glasses, are, I'm going to paint them more of a tan than the white because I want them to stand out a little bit. So this tan that I'm going to use for the leopard print part of it, I'm going to just pull some aside, add a little white. So I just get a little bit of a lighter tan color. And again, I just mix with my brush on my palette as I go. These guys are a cinch because they're cut out. You, you don't have to worry about going out of the lines or anything. Look, you just kind of paint that on. And it's just a little shade darker than the white, so it will show a little bit. But our tan for our leopard print is still going to show up. Okay. Pretty simple and quick. And this is really a fun project. You don't have to really pay attention to it too, too much. You could have something going, your latest Netflix series going in the background or some music. I'm not crazy about painting so quietly, but Facebook doesn't allow us to have music or they'll take our video down because of the licensing and whatnot, which I understand. But I hope you guys put some music on. I love to have music on when I'm painting. Or like I said, maybe whatever I'm catching up on on Netflix or something. Speaking of which... Anyone have a series they're into now? I'm kind of between things, so I would welcome some suggestions if you've got something going on that you're watching. Patty, he's cute, isn't he? He's going to be adorable done. Let me get the little eyes done since I'm right here. Might as well work on these little pieces, and then we can put a second coat as we're working on the big guy. And let's see. What have we got? Oh, the blessed bit. I'm going to do in the same turquoise that we use for his scarf. Like I said, I like this color palette, and I don't want to be all over the place. I'm not going to use one color turquoise for the scarf and then pick out another color for this. I like to pick out a palette and then kind of stick to it. It sort of is cohesive, and it just gives the whole piece a nice look, whether you're painting a canvas or you're painting um, a wood piece, or, or even if you're doing like a wreath or, or some other craft. It's nice to sort of start with your color palette and work from there. It, it, it kind of gives you some parameters to stay within. I'm going to add a little white to this because, like I just told you, it, it just gives it a little more opaque base. So when we do the second or third coat, this turquoise will really pop. It's got a brown underneath, so it's really not covering as, as well as it would if it was painted right on a white surface like a canvas or something. Oh, and so I was going over supplies a little bit. So the brushes are just acrylic. They're, I don't use uh, synthetic. I always see acrylic. They are an acrylic, synthetic, acrylic, but uh, I usually use the short handle brushes. 
sometimes for a canvas painting, I do have the brights, which are the long brushes. And then paints, like I said, in the acrylic, they are pretty inexpensive. You can get them at all the hobby and crafts shops, but you really don't need a lot either. You don't have to invest a lot. If you get your primary colors, these colors can all be mixed from your primaries. And generally I can answer those questions and, and let you know what to mix to get what as we go along. If you are using particular colors, just pop me in a comment and ask me what, what I'm mixing or what I could mix to make this color. As long as you have your primary colors, you're good to go. All right, we'll let the blessed dry. You're going to see how quickly and easily the black will cover. So that's something we don't ever have to base coat and probably won't even need a second coat there. So just these little guys. The teeny. You could hold them with tweezers and move them, but I'm just going to get my fingers all colored and painty with the paint, but that's all right. I'm usually always painty, so it does not matter. Okay. So that covers really well. We'll just let them go and dry. I'll put a little white highlight in there afterwards. Um, the rose. So I am going to, I got kind of a dark maroon color out and I'll show you why. Because I wanna have a base coat of a dark base coat. And then we're gonna put in lighter little um, petals on, on it and make it look very rose light. So let's, and you can see again how the darker colors cover really well. And what else is good is, see how I'm painting over the entire little wood cutout? But now you can still see the little lines because they're etched in and not painted on or traced on. They're gonna stay there for you. So you don't have to worry about, oh, now I've lost my lines. What do I paint? What do I do? They're there. So that's pretty cool. So that's gonna dry over there. Just get that a little bit more paint here and there. Okay. All right. So the extra pieces are done. We'll go back to our bunny now. Do that little white section um, by his eyeglasses that we missed. And because those are pretty much dry now. The fun part is going to be putting it together at the end. Just going to glue those pieces on. Like I said, I love the E6000 glue. I don't know, have you used that? Comes in a tube, you can get it at Michael's or the hardware store. Lots of uh, jewelry makers use that because that really, you, you glue your jewelry bits and pieces together and that, that's on there for good. So I do like the E6000 more than say the glue gun. I find sometimes when I use the glue gun and the pieces are very smooth like this, they could pop off. I'd rather use the E6000 or a super glue. I'm dangerous with the super glue though. I always glue my fingers together. So I'm gonna stick with, I don't want to glue my fingers together with the E6000, but it's not like super glue that you're automatically, there you're bonded and you can't, you know, move it. A little streaky here and there. So we're just, I'm a little closer here to it. So I'm just going to touch that up. And then I'm going to show you in a minute how to do the cheeks. And one more quick coat of that teal color. Yeah, he's pretty adorable. Oops, I just made a boo-boo there, which is actually good because then I can show you how to fix things. So I got this turquoise paint, a good glob of it right there on his face. So I'm just taking a little bit of water and I'm just gonna scoop it back into there and voila. Get off, off there and then we'll just touch that bit up with some white. So do not fear, do not worry about, oh, it's a mistake, what am I gonna do? We always can fix, and I'm happy to help you fix any boo-boos if you just uh, let me know what's going on. I can give you some tips on how to do that. And then back to this little round brush for the little bit here. Okay. And it really almost, um, almost shouldn't even worry about this little line where the cutouts are because I maybe it's probably a better idea just to go in a little in case the cutout doesn't cover exact. We wouldn't have a little blank uh, brown spot there. So, all right, fix this little boo-boo we made. And I also will show you, well, maybe we'll try it on some of this is you could paint your little details, but I also um, always tell you about the paint markers, which I'll show you when we get to that section. You can always use paint markers for the details. If you're not comfortable with the little liner brush or feel a little unsure, you can certainly use a paint marker for any details and writing and signing your name and, and your little whiskers and whatever you might want. You can, you can do paint marker or with, I'll show you how to do it with the paintbrush too. All right, these leaves, 
Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to jump ahead, even though I'm going to be careful not to put my hand in it, because this yellow area is going to take a little bit to cover. So let's start that process now, and then we'll do the leaves. So as you can see, if I went straight on here with yellow, look at how translucent it is. It would take you forever. So I'm scooping the white in here, and I'm going to just do it super light. It could almost be just the white. It has a little yellow in it, but it'll be a really much easier to cover second and third coat with the bright yellow. It'll come out nice and bright for you as opposed to trying to cover that translucent yellow over and over again. So it's a good area. Just kind of use your bigger brush. You can use like a one inch or a three quarter. You can go to the real big guys if you wanted to bring the big guns in. Since I have this in my hand, I'm going to just use this one. It's a size 10 flat, 12, sorry. I use 10 and 12. And I also like small ones sometimes, like a little tiny, if you have that in your in your arsenal, a little tiny, tiny, like size two flat is good for some really little flowers and things that I'll show you as we're painting different projects, how to use that brush, do some little one stroke flowers. You know, no matter what you do, you always find little hairs popping off the brush. You can just pop them off with your brush, just kind of scoop them out. No, you wouldn't even have probably have seen that afterwards. but So I'm still taking tiny bits of yellow, grabbing my white, and just getting a base coat on this. The paint's drying pretty quick on this wood, so that's good. Hi, Denise. Thanks for watching. I'll send you some info, but feel free to uh, message me your address, and I can uh, tell you whether it needs to be shipped or I can deliver it for you and what the shipping might be. Let me know if you need paints and brushes. I'll do the whole kit. But if not, I'd be happy to just get you the, the video link, the photograph, and the wood piece. This would be a fun project to paint on Easter Day with the family. It's always good to after the egg hunt to have a little activity, right? This is going to be nice and bright. I didn't like the dark, dark yellow, but... I do like it a little lighter, so I think I'm going to stick to a lighter yellow than, than what I showed you on that photo. And you can kind of see how my brush is just up against the little, very light etching there is on this project, but it does help you kind of keep in your lines here. Great project for the kids. Gives them a little guideline but they can still go ahead and use their imagination. Kids do a fabulous job. I love seeing the kids' projects and having the kids in class. Honestly, they're, it's it's just so great how they do not worry. They don't care what the neighbors looks like. They don't care if it looks like mine. They have so much fun adding crowns and magic you know, wands and butterflies, and I just love to see what they, what they end up with in projects. It's great to have no fear like that. It's great to encourage them with their creativity. Now more than ever, they need to step away from the electronics where that's even their schooling now to just get their hands dirty and use their imagination, paint, and kids love it. I know it's messy sometimes, but it really is worth it letting them uh, go wild with the paint. Okay, let's let that dry a bit. I kind of almost like the, the light and dark kind of look of it and the painterly look. You can uh, continue on with that for your second coat, or you could paint it a very smooth uh, all solid shade of yellow. It's all up to you. You're the boss of yourself and you can paint whatever you like. And you notice I always have a paper towel in my hand, not for this piece, but I do a lot of dry brushing, which I always have that paper towel there. But I like to get, I don't like to wash my brush off and then go into my paint without really drying off the brush and getting all that water out, uh, especially with the acrylics where they tend to be a little translucent. If I have water in my brush, it's going to be even harder to cover. Okay, my little bits and pieces are drying, so let's get another coat on there, especially this teal one. It's looking a little brown, so let's, we might need a few coats. So let's quickly put another coat on there. And you can't see me there, can you? Here we go. We'll do it right here. I've got some white, and I didn't really mix it that much, but that's all right. Again, like I said, I like it when it's a little varied, some darks, some lights. I'm going to do a third coat, too. This is covering much better but it's going to need a little more coverage. So see if I can be careful and not get my blue onto my yellow, which is right underneath me. I'm not the neatest painter, so it might be a little bit of a, of a um, task. But Plans for Easter? Anyone doing anything fun, getting together with family, either in person or 
by Zoom. We've become experts at the uh, Zoom meetings, haven't we? And families get togethers and friend cocktail hours, and it's opened up a whole new way to to keep in touch with our, our friends and family, which is kind of nice if you're farther away. Even when we can all be in person together again, it's nice to have that option to get together for a Zoom meeting. I haven't done any Zoom classes. I do want to kind of experiment with that too, because I'd love to be able to watch and see what you guys are doing at the same time. And then we can show each other our projects and I can help you a little more. I don't know if anyone out there has done many Zoom classes. I'd love to have some feedback. I do have um, one scheduled for an organization, but I really want to try some on our page here. So maybe we'll do that pretty soon. So let that dry. One more coat when that's done. I think the scarf is done enough. Let's get our leaves on there. We're really working right along. There's not a whole lot left we have to do. I can't wait to put the glasses, um, the uh, leopard print on the glasses, though. Actually, while I'm thinking of that, let's put another coat of that base coat on there. And then that's, this will be ready to do that little uh, leopard print, which is super easy, super easy. Let me, I'll show you how that's done. You can use that on all sorts of projects. And after this, I'm going to get back outside. It is gorgeous out. We're in Central Mass here, and we have, I bet you it's close to 60 today. I am thrilled. We're in Central Massachusetts, so it could snow next week. So we appreciate every little minute we get of good weather and sunshine. Sunny out. It's gorgeous. So cool. Okay, so just get this little tiny bit more of the glasses, and we are good to go and work on our leaves. that out of the way. Can you see me? Am I, oh, I'm way down here. Sorry. I'm just putting a little coat of tan on the glasses. Sorry about that. I'm going to try to keep you uh, in the loop here. There. So they lay out their second coat. I'm going to have so much detail on top, it really doesn't matter if they're a little see-through anyway. I'm going to quickly touch up where I had the little boo-boo on his chin and a little more white on there just to cover because I want that dry when I go to put the details on. So there's that. Leaves. I am going to go a little lighter. This is, looks a little dark and blackish to me. I want them to be brighter and lime green a little more. And I have bunches of bottled greens of all shades. And that's great. You can use those. But I have to tell you, my primary yellow and then a primary phthalo green make gorgeous greens if you mix them. And you can get all shades. You can get a really nice lime green. You can add a little white and get, look at the colors. Look at the greens. This phthalo green with the phthalo blue, like a real primary blue mix, makes fabulous color for the ocean. So we'll be using those colors a lot. But I like it a little brighter. And remember, to cover that brown, a little white is going to be good as a base. So I may not have it this light. Oh, I might. It's kind of a nice green. Um, it's a good base coat. Anyway, we can always go darker. But I like the way that looks. And I also like the painterly look of it. See, it's a little dark and light. Because I'm mixing on my palette, on the fly, not mixing up the perfect shade of green, just a little bit of each, a little bit of all those colors. And then using kind of a crisscrossy brush stroke, not, not, too, not too like all in a line. It looks painterly. And it's not a bad... Thing to leave with some lights and darks rather than having it all perfect shade of green. I like that look. I like painterly. I like the painterly look of this um, yellow. So the second coat of that I may leave a little bit rough and ready too. And this is pretty much dry so I can put my hand up here and rest it and not worry about it, um, you know, getting smudging the paint. I might shade a little on this after with some dark. I'll show you how we do that. Sometimes as we're painting a project, I like to show you different techniques that you can use uh, for all projects. Okay, same thing on the other leaf. I'm just taking some of the dark phthalo, a little bit of yellow, some of that white, and just kind of putting that on there for a base coat. And I am going to not worry so much about that flower. Again, if the flower is cut just a, slightly off, um, it's good to have that little extra bit there. And you'll see why when we go to put those pieces on. Okay. There. Perfect. 
that works. And then we're gonna make it a little darker on the, uh, some shading after like under the flower, maybe. Um, let's see. I'm almost thinking that I might like to put some polka dots on his scarf. See how I change things up as I go? Fix that little boo-boo again. There, kidding. Once it's all base coated, we'll get some shading in, we'll get some little highlight lines and whatnot. Why don't we do finish our little rose cutout? It's very dark maroon right now, all painted solid, but we're gonna go ahead now and, and uh, make it look more like a rose. And let me show you how. Let's get these pinks back. I'm gonna go to a round brush. It's just probably, a, it's a size three. And what I'm going to do, and I'm going to just move you over a minute because I want you to see what I'm doing here. All right, so I'm gonna take these pinks that we have. I've got a couple shades. I didn't really need all these shades. We could have mixed all this color with, with just some red and white, but I had this darker pink. Now, we're getting to the little bit of the detail areas, and you might have seen me say this before. When I'm doing detail work, I like to add a little water to my paint. I know before we said we don't want water on the paint, in the paint because we want good coverage, but when we're doing the details and you're doing a fine line or using your liner brush, you want the paint to flow more like ink. You don't want it to be dragging along. Paint's sitting out now for a while, so you don't want to... Um, to have like your lines not nice and smooth. So I am going to, let's see here. I'm gonna get rid of that little yellow boot bit there. And I'm just going to take some of that pink and just make some kind of C strokes. This is more of a whimsical rose. So it's not like I'm trying to make a perfect realistic rose. This is more whimsical and I'm just doing this, little C strokes. You can almost go by the little etching if you want to do that. And let me just, I see my, my laptop is getting the low power, so I'm gonna just get the, get the charger brought down to me in a second so I can plug that in. I don't want to lose you guys. Okay. Hang on one second. Thank goodness for all of the um, devices. So I can send a text and be recording and be recording and all this business, it's kind of fun. Okay, and then we will get back to this. Okay, so I've done this, these little, just little C strokes. And what I'm gonna do is just build it up so it's lighter and lighter. So I'm gonna go to this lighter pink now. And same thing, this little, little little sea strokes and again I'm not i'm not striving for a real rose look i'm going to use different shades and at the end we're going to add little white highlights here and there um so we can still do that on this one so there i mean it's pretty simple it's not I didn't really work too hard on that and i think that's good but since i have it now i'm going to just do some of the little white ones on there and we don't have to come back and put those highlights on after cool so we'll leave that one aside our little eyes are are pretty well done so those are fine we'll put those above up here i'm gonna do the next coat one more it looks solid to you guys but up close it's a little streaky i'm gonna put a little more thank you thanks okay i'm gonna plug you in so i don't lose you i thought i was fully charged but sometimes these devices lose their charge pretty quick so hang on just a sec and this way i will not lose you during the class all righty thank you we are charging great okay cool let's do a little bit of the turquoise here I'm so excited to finally paint this guy. I've had him for about a week and I've been just chomping at the bit to, to paint him. When I'm done, I'll upload it to YouTube too. So you, if it's hard to find on the Facebook page, sometimes you can always find it very easily on YouTube. 
And you can go back and look at uh, all the classes I have so far. I've had lots of classes up there, lots of free classes and some canvas painting classes. How I work when I have a scheduled class like that is I create a supply list with a tracing if you need the tracing. Um, sometimes we freehand, but if you're more comfortable tracing, I include that to download. So on YouTube, if you go and find a video you like, I still have the sign up link. Even though the class has passed, the sign up link is there. Sign up with your email. You will get the supply list by email. And you will have the, uh, the video, of course, because you're there on YouTube. And you'll have the tracing. So any of those classes you've seen, even if we did them a month ago, you can still get your supply list. And again, any questions, just let me know and I'll take care of that for you. Yeah, Patty. And this is, um, it's not a brand new, it's pretty new laptop. Um, but yeah, sometimes I just, I try to charge all, all my devices all night long and, and, and then I'm good to go, but it doesn't always happen. So inviting my friend to pop on. Oh, Patty. Yeah. Have her pop on. Just kind of, kind of see what we're up to. And uh, again, you don't have to always follow along, but it's fun just to, just to get your creative on for a little while. Okay. That's probably the last coat on that. Back to our big guy. Let's move our little rose over and get him back into position. I kind of have an idea where so that you can see him. This is pretty much dry. Uh, flower uh, leaves are dry. Let's do those next. And I'm just going to show you. I'm mostly going again to show you a little technique if you want to add shading to something. When you're um, using acrylic paint, it dries fairly quickly. But if you work fast, you still can blend the colors together. You don't want to work too slowly. You kind of almost want to go fast. You're not thinking about it too much. You're not getting bogged down in the details. But then you can blend your colors. So I'm going to go back kind of with the, with the green we were using. I'm almost re-wetting it so that I can blend because I do need that wet paint. So I'm going to quickly just get some green paint on there again, right? Right in the middle. But under the flower, you know, there would be a shadow even though this is whimsical and we're not doing it perfectly realistic, but it might be nice to have it a little darker. So I have just dried my brush off. So I took off the lighter green that was on it. I'm not washing it, I'm just drying it. Right straight into that dark phthalo green and I'm gonna put it where that I want the shadow. So see the little bit of dark there? And now because this is wet and this is wet and I've dried my brush off, I'm just using my dry brush to blend. Look at, you can get a nice little blend and you can keep it darker there and have a little shadow. You can do the same thing if you want the end to be a little lighter. That that lighter shade we had when we mixed a little white with that lime green, you can kind of paint it on there. So you got a little lighter on the end and just the same thing. Use that dry brush to blend. It's a cool technique when you're doing some more realistic paintings and you can get it as deep as you want or as bright. So if you let that dry a second and, and, and just add it a little more of the dark, you could have it darker there if you wanted. But can you see I'm working pretty fast and I'm not fussing or worrying or being too careful. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make a little darker pink up in the ears like that and maybe shade one side of the nose. I can never leave anything alone. I have to go back and kind of put my own stamp on it and make it a little different than the last time. Okay, so same thing. Let's get a little bit of that same green we had on our leaf. That's a little too light. And see, I'm working pretty fast. Got the green on just to re-wet it. Dry off, just drying off my brush on the paper towel. Get on there with just the dark where I want a shadow. And again, we don't have to pay attention to those lines too much there, actually. I did over here, but I really didn't need to. Okay, so see, now that's just in there. It looks like very um, two different shades. But that's when we wanna just dry our brush off and, and just blend. And I'm not using any sort of special stroke. I'm just kind of going back and forth, bringing that dark into the light, bringing that light into the dark. And see how you get a nice shadow? Same thing again on the outside edge. We'll just go from light to dark. Just dry off the paint, get the light shade. I'm gonna get more yellow and get really light on the edge here maybe. And soften. Now, up close, it looks very painterly. I like that kind of look. You might want to work on it a little more with, again, keep the brush dry. And you can finesse it and get it as smooth as a blend as you want. But it has to be while that paint's wet. If that paint dries, you're not going to move it with the brush. But you can always add more paint and rework it. So that's kind of what I did. This 
leaf was dry, added a little bit of paint just so that I can blend, put my lights and darks on. It's going to be really cool with the little flower afterwards. Um, let's see. And I might add some more lights to that. It's looking dark to me now that I put it up against the light colors. So it's always, it's a work in progress till it's done. I think I will work on what I mentioned. I just like the way this blend looks. And I'm going to do it a little more in other parts. So say we've got these leaves that we did. And I could very well have called them done. And I probably should, but I can't. I have to go one little step further. So I'm going to get that same pink we had. It's almost like I'm just re-wetting the area a little bit. And I want it to be just a little darker where it would be a little shadow down here. Just coming out down here. Again, I'm going to just um, let me get a clean paper towel. I've got a lot of green on that one. Again, I've always got a paper towel handy. It becomes second nature after a while. And I'm just using the wet paint to blend, get some more of that light. And I'm going to blend right up into the color that we had. But how do you like that look? Do you like the shading on that more than just the flat um, pink? I, I do. And I've got uh, somehow got green over here on my white ear. And again, if this doesn't come off with just water, a little of that alcohol would take that right off too. But that looks like it's okay. And back to this guy. And you can see the paint is drying on me. It's not budging as easy. I just go back into the wet paint and just use that as my blender. You could, because his leaf is his leaf, because his ear is turned over right there, that might be a good spot for a little shadow. I'm going into way more detail on my little bunny than I anticipated, but I don't care. It's fun. I'm enjoying it. And then just a little shadow here. That would be a little darker there because the other part of the ear is over it. There. What do you think? No, same thing. I'm just going to re-wet it a little bit with the same color, which is fine because we might need a little more to, for coverage anyway. And all I'm doing is I'm going to, here's a little one-stroke technique that's kind of fun. Taking a little of the pink on my brush. I want a shadow just on one side. So I've got just the light pink on my brush. Dip into the darker pink just with the corner, just the little corner of my brush. Pat it off just to blend a little bit. Look at how I've got two colors on my brush and I'm blending it just with one stroke. Right down the, I'm gonna do the left side, the dark side, right down the dark si left side of that guy. And look at that, nice little shadow. I think it could be even a little more. I'm taking just the tiniest bit more of that color. But before I go onto my piece, I always just pat it on my palette a few times to start the blending process. There. Now, in that same idea, back into the, the pink I used, scoop a little white with the other side, pat it off, and voila, we get a highlighted side. There. I think it's kind of more fun than just the flat pink. We'll give it a little highlight, too, on the dark side. Leaves are all set. Just a quick coat of yellow down here, and then we'll be on our way. So I'm going to get back to that yellow. And just for fun, let's just see how the bright yellow goes on top of that. It does cover pretty good. I'm going to add still a little white. I just like the look of the painterly look. You could go with just your solid yellow, but I kind of like the look, the painterly look. And now to get that, you would never want to do back and forth or up and down. It would, it would look, it would be like you're painting a wall and it would look like that. I'm using little crisscross strokes. You could use little circular strokes, regardless, um, any kind of stroke, but just not up and down or back and forth. So what do you think? I like the look of that. I'm going to add just some white sometimes. And I'm working fairly quick. And, and because... I'm working fairly quick again because I want it to be wet on wet and to blend. You know, you can slow down, of course, on your little edge. You want your little edge to be okay. So I'm going to just do my little edge. Did you see the little gnome? I have the cutout gnome like this with the bees. So cute. That's a great spring summer project. It's up on the page a little bit if you scroll up a bit. But I will... um put them on again as well as the little ones. I think I might have that one as the little one. And then we have the really cute bunny um, 
gnome wearing bunny slippers. So a bunny gnome wearing bunny slippers could not be cuter, right? We all love gnomes now. Gnomes are back and strong, and I think they're so fun. I've always loved gnomes. I'm glad they're back. I'm old, so you might um, might not remember, but what was it back in the 70s that the, the gnomes were huge? You saw that, uh, I forget the artist's name that had the gnome book, and even like, I think it was Macy's, Filene's maybe had them as their, uh, on their bags and on all their advertising and branding. So fun. I loved them back then. I have that book actually somewhere here. But I'm old, so I remember that. Okay. Okay. Sometimes I go with a lighter shade or even the white because the yellow is still wet. White right into it is not going to turn it white. It's going to blend with the yellow and give you that kind of a variegated look. I'm not even paying attention. I'm not even looking at uh, how much of each color. I'm just sort of going, putting it on the piece. If I like it, go. If I don't, adjust. Another good thing about having it painterly and variegated like this is you don't tend to see your streaks or if the paint's a little translucent, it sort of works in your effect, in your favor. Is floating what you do with his nose? Jody, kind of. Um, you could do it floated. Floated would be more a clean brush with clean water, a little color on the edge, just like I did, and you can float a dark in like that. So you could do that with dried paint. So I was going on about the wet colors blending. That's how I tend to work. But you could very well have dried nose, just a little water on your paintbrush, dab it off. You don't want it to be dripping, and dip in just like I did into the darker pink and just do that little stroke, and it would be the same um, effect. I will, um, I've been promising, people are interested, I do a lot of one-stroke painting. I can show you how to do roses and, and all kinds of things. So I will do a little uh, class or some, or some um, lives about that because people are interested in it. And it's great for adding little decorative touches to almost anything that you're working on. I used to work for a furniture company for years and um, back in the, I guess it was the 80s, when all the hand painted furniture was in pot was in, in um, fashion and in pine furniture. So I worked for a company painting all their furniture. So I would be in the warehouse painting the orders. People would pick the color and I would paint it. I would go to their house and paint it. I would be doing demos at home shows. So I could paint those flowers like in my sleep still. Okay. So what do you think? I like that. Again, this is a little bit variegated and, and I can still see the wood through it. So I might do one more quick coat but you can do it that way or like my little sample here, you could certainly paint it just so it's a solid uh, color yellow, you know, the same color yellow. We'll let it dry a minute and we'll put the detail on our glasses in another coat on the writing. And then when that's dry, we can do one last little bit there. I didn't grab my glue, but we'll put this together best we can so I can show you what it's gonna look like, the three dimensional look. One more quick coat of this turquoise color, teal turquoise. Great color. You can use it for everything. Oh, I think I was going to do a little shading on his scarf maybe and put some dots on there just for fun. Remember to add your own touch to everything. Stripes, polka dot. I'm, I'm a big polka dot girl. I love polka dots. You could add glitter. Speaking of polka dot girl or glitter girls, people love the glitter. I like glitter a little bit, but I'm not like full force with glitter. But geez, you could put like on the writing that we're doing here, you could put like a clear glitter over it. That would be kind of cool. I don't use so much the sprinkle glitter that once you sprinkle it on a project, it's going to be in your house for the rest of your life. The glitter is everywhere. I like the paints. They come in the craft tubes like this, you know, the craft paints and the glitter. So it's kind of in a binder. It's almost like a glitter glue. So when you put it on, it stays where you put it. and You don't have to worry about the little bits of glitter flying all over the place. All right. So this is going to be the fun part, adding our leopard's print. So simple. You could use this little technique on anything. You could paint some wine glasses and just use this all over. We're doing tan, a little black. You could use tan and a little gold metallic. Metallic paints are really fun too. Um, you, this would be cute on this even, some of the gold metallic, but I'm gonna go with the paints that I have out. So let's use the colors that we 
we have here. I've got this tan. You can see that. Yep. So start with the tan. It's pretty random. You're going to just make some kind of little, um, what do you call them? Little blobby, circly kind of bits. I'm really not making perfect anything. Some of them could just be on the edge peeking over. So it's just more of these little irregular circle bits any which way you want. So you can make whole ones. You could, like I said, have a little bit showing here and there. And I'm just kind of scattering them around just with the tan color right now. You could very well just take a brown and, and add some white to get a tan. I happen to have a tan color, but that would be easy enough to mix. You wouldn't have to have all the colors. It's really pretty, pretty easy to mix up whatever you need here. These glasses would be cool with zebra stripes, right? I think I have a pair like that somewhere here, white with zebra stripes. Um, and again, like polka dot, little hearts. That'd be kind of cute. Again, imagination. Okay, that's all we do to start. Then we're going to just add some little black bits too. So now, and again, if you need to, and your paint's been sitting out and it's a little thick, feel free to just a few drops of water just to have it flow a little easier. And now, they're not all just outlined. It would look too perfect. You just want to take along the edges, and you can outline some, a little bit of lines here and there. It's pretty random, and you will have the photograph to go by. So it's going to be pretty easy, because you could just look up close at that and just follow it. But once you do it, you're going to say, oh, geez, I could add that sort of thing to lots of projects. I am not worrying too much about it being perfectly in line with the tan. I can show some of that background through. It really is pretty rough. And again, the Posca pens, the, the paint markers, is different brands. I like the Posca. Come in uh, a finer and a heavier line. These are a paint marker. They're a little different than just a Sharpie. They're a paint marker. So paint is going to come out of this. And it's a great tool if you're a little unsure and want to finish your piece up um, a little easier. You can use the paint markers for this. What you have to be careful of, though, is make sure your paint underneath is dry. If your paint is wet and you pick it up with the marker, you're going to lose your marker. So this paint that I just did, the tan, is wet. But because I'm using paint, it doesn't matter. But if you wanted to do this detail with your Posca marker, I would have let that tan dry really well and then go back later and add those little bits. They are fabulous. So the white, I, I couldn't find my white one before we went on. I wanted to show you that one. But I'll just paint the white details on this project. But again, you could have done it with your marker. All right, so that's all that that really needs, those little glasses. I might put a few little lines, uh, like little shade, shading highlight lines, but I want that to dry first. So let's let that dry. We'll put that aside. I'm kind of thinking that my rose is a little bit too dark in the background. I'm going to just take a bigger, no, I'll just take the same brush and go a little more light pink. It just, my first coat of pink um, sort of blended into the background a little bit and I just want it a little brighter. This is where you can just look at your piece and, and evaluate it and say it's, I like this, I don't like that and uh, it's a crook. You can paint right over all sorts of things. So can you see I'm doing the same little C strokes but I'm going to make it a, some a little lighter. I'm, I'm kind of covering up that maroon background a little more really. So what I'm doing is just putting them in between. I want a little of that very dark I don't want as much as what was there. So let me just get some lighter colors and I'm getting less of that to show up, less of that background. Can you see I'm just kind of doing the same thing we did using like a lighter pink, a little bit of white in there again. And I just wanted less of that dark background because when I tried it on my piece a little while ago, it just looked too dark for the yellows and the light colors that we have on that. And in my little one stroke class, when we do that, I'll show you how to make roses that look really one stroke cool roses. But this one is sort of cut out, so we're going to just go with the shape. There. I think it's just a little better. It's just a little lighter and a little brighter. What do you think? You guys agree? I think it just needed to be a little lighter. All right, so that's good. We'll let that dry. Our little eyes, the only thing we're going to need, these are these little ovals, right? They need a little highlight. Whenever you do eyes, 
you need to put a little highlight. Sometimes it's just a little dot or a little a comma stroke. Remember when you're looking at them, you always do them. If you're doing them at one o'clock, you do them at one o'clock on both. You don't do like crazy eyes. Like we did, I did a crazy eyes yesterday on my lamb by accident and he looked like Marty Feldman. So we're going to make him look just like not Marty Feldman. So I'm just taking like a white on my little round brush and I'm just doing a little comma stroke. Now how to do a little comma stroke. I take the paint, I reload each time. And let's see if you can see this. It's just, I press down a little bit and then I pull up on the brush. That's how you get that thin tail. It's not magic. It's not, I have to have, you know, I don't have enough control. It's really, look at on my paper down here. It's just press down a little bit. Oh, you can't see it there. I've got to do it sideways for you. Let's see, what can I do that on? I can do it on the back of my bunny. I just want to get it so you can see. So you just press down and pull the brush up and you get a nice thin line without really trying. And again, this is where if your paint was too thick, you would add just a little bit of water to it. But his eyes are going to be just like this. Let's see. I'm putting him over here where you can't see, but his eyes are going to be like that. Hard to see black on black. But can you see the little highlights are both on the right side? We don't want them to be like crazy eyes. Okay, so we're going to make sure we glue them in the right spot. So they're going to dry. The blessed uh, piece is, is good. I think that looks great. I get a little blob on there. Okay. Let us get back to this guy. I'm going to add some of the details. This is still drying a little bit, but let me show you. You can, if you wanted to, you could add your details with your marker. I'm going to use like a liner brush, like a dagger liner brush. It's great for little details and little... Um, line work but my paint again has been sitting here so i'm really going to add a little bit of water and pull it aside i want it to flow like ink for me i don't want to have these little dry tails i want to have it really um just so i can just get a nice stroke and you'll know when you try it on your piece if you've added enough water i add a little bit try it if it drags and looks dry then add a little more you just don't want so much that when you're painting your your paint runs off your off your page but i just pulled this little aside and i'm going to work out of this little puddle here where i've really got it watered down i'm going to add just some detail now to my guy kind of following the lines that are etched in um and sometimes just adding them in so i'm going to go up here and i'm going to work upside down so i don't put my hand in the yellow which is a little bit wet still but i want a little bit of detail up here on these little hairs that he's got the hair has hairs so we're going to just add some and i'm getting quite a few strokes with what i've loaded on my brush i'm not having to reload every minute and so can you see i'm just making some little um just some little strokes for the hair I do want to outline the pink a little bit. Now, remember, do not struggle a lot with these. Don't worry. They don't have to be perfect. And they don't have to be from one end to the other. You could stop and start. You could do whatever you need. But I'm going by the line that's on there. So sometimes I'm using a little more pressure with my brush and sometimes not as much because I don't want to try to make it perfect. And again, you could have gone with your marker, which I'll show you a little bit of that too. Oh, did you see me? I don't know if I was off the camera there, but here we go with this part. We're gonna just, where that etched line is, just gonna outline a little bit, just a little. So just a little bit of, I don't know, just a little pizzazz. We can always go and do like a little line here on his ear. I must have smudged this with my hand, maybe. It looks a little bit like I can see through that white. So while I'm here, let's just touch it up. I don't know what I did there, but anyway, okay. This little is a little fleck of black. I want to get off there. There, gone. All right, so that's ears, hair, good. And let's outline his nose a little bit. I'm still working in that same little puddle I made, but adding water as I go. And so these little lines that I'm painting now are etched. So you don't have to worry about where are they or trace them on. They're etched. So you can just follow that with your brush. So I'm just doing that little bit on his face. And now we'll do his little whiskers. Again, I'm not having to wonder where they are. I am just following. This is a very similar stroke 
that we did on those little comma strokes on his eyes. I'm taking the thin down paint, starting for his, an his antenna, his whisker. Press a little bit heavier there, and then I'm lifting up, lifting up, lifting up, right off my, my piece. That's how you get that nice thin line. And practice. Feel free to pa practice on your paper or on your palette. It's just um, pressing down. And lift, 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 and you're going to get a nice thin line. And that can be used in so many different things when you're painting. So I'm pressing and I'm lifting off the page. Pressing and lifting off. Press and lift. And you uh, just, without trying, get that little thin whisker line. And let's just outline his nose a tiny bit. Same thing. We're just going to follow the line. And whatever brush you're comfortable with, you can use a liner like this, or you can certainly just use a little round detail brush. I kind of went, I overshot it there. So a good way to fix things is just, like I said, with some, just take some water on your brush. It's still wet. And you can just scooch it off. And then we can always touch it up with the white paint if we need to. But we all make little boo-boos, and uh, I'm not going to really fret about it. It's just easy to fix. Just some paint on my brush. Work off whatever I can. And I'm going to just do my line, and then I'll just touch it up with a little white. It's actually, um, to go around that nose, it's probably a little easier with a detail brush than that long liner and trying to drag it around carefully. I'm better off with my little brush, I think. So let me just go back. And that's a little wet. I don't want it to uh, run. So what I'm going to do is take a teeny piece of paper towel and just dry it. Okay. And now I'll get my black line first, and then I'll worry about touching up the white. There, the black line's fixed. It's a little grayish. I don't know if you can see because you're a little away from the camera, but all I'm gonna do is take some white and just touch up where I had that boo-boo. Yeah, there we go. Fix that up. I'm dragging more of that black in. Okay. Yeah. Now, I wanna give the nose a little highlight with that little calmer like we did on the eye. So I'm going to just take this white paint on that same brush, press a little bit, pull, get that little tail. It's dragging because I didn't add water to it, but good enough. That part's all done. If you see any little bits you want to touch up, you can go back anytime, touch them up. I just want to fix this a little bit. Okay. All right, so glasses, flowers gonna go there. This guy is pretty much done. We're going to um, put our, our writing on top of here when it's time. I don't like that the brown's showing through a little bit. So one quick coat again, and some of the yellow and white, and then we're pretty much done. I just want one more coat. And again, I'm gonna leave it kind of variegated. I don't have to worry about getting into all the bits and pieces really, because it does have yellow there to begin with. Oh, and I was gonna maybe put polka dots on this little scarf just for fun. Yep, see, it's just kind of really covering much better. This is the third coat, but yellow is a tough one. It's pretty transparent. Mixing it with white did help, but Still need to go one more coat. You could have let it go. You could have let it go if you want, but I just wanted to cover a little, little bit better there. And I want to just give a little bit of... Uh, decorative strokes with that goldy color. I kind of like that color a lot. I use that ochre gold color in a lot of things. And here we are, just about done. Okay, what do you think? That covers much better. And you can just go ahead and do any amount of coats as you need. And you know what? You could do this in a different color. It doesn't have to be in the yellow. You could do whatever, a mint green, um, all sorts of colors. A little trick, actually let's put a little shading and then we're gonna show you how to do the polka dots, a little trick for polka dots. This um, teal color, I'm just re-wetting it real quick just in that little corner where I want some shading. And I think I need to mix it maybe with a little, I just want a little darker shade of that. So I'm gonna just mix teensiest bit of blue with that. 
just so I have a slightly darker teal. So I just took a little bit of the teal and a little bit of this blue. And I'm going to just put the little dark section in here like we did with the leaves, just to show you again how to blend that. There. And now with my brush, I'm just blending it out into the teal that I just put on there. So what do you, yeah, I like a little, little, little bit of shading in there. And then I'm going to just take the white and a little teal to make a little lighter shade on the edge. Because I just want to show you how easy it is to shade things with this technique, wet and wet. I like that painterly look. What do you guys think? Okay. Now, if you want to do polka dots on something, here's a super simple way to do it. I just use the back end of my brush. So depending on the size of the polka dot you want and the size of the brush you grab, so I would go ahead and use the back end to make dots. You could make little teeny tiny ones if you've got like a little pointy brush. A little pointy one. See, that's got, got a little point on it, but I want a bigger circle. So I'm going to grab the, this brush. I want white polka dots, so I'm just going to go right into a big puddle of white and just dot. You get nice round dots without even trying. I reload every now and then. If you want them the same size, you would reload each time. But I like that some are a little smaller and some are a little bigger. Isn't that a super duper easy way to do polka dots? And then that little space is hardly going to be seen, but we'll put a couple there. Okay. It's easy as that to do little dots. Um, I want to do a little, with my liner brush, a little bit of gold on the edge of this little sign. It's kind of plain. And so I want to add a little something, something. Just this ochre gold color. Can you see how thick the paint is now from sitting? Can you see how messy my palette is? I'm adding just some water to that. Just to pull it aside, add water because I'm gonna do some lining, liner work and I want it to be a little bit to flow a little nicer. That's still too thick. I get it to where I like it in one little puddle there. And just on the edge, I'm just going to, can you see it? Yeah, I'm just going to kind of add some little strokes like this, just a little decorative stuff. Going back into that little puddle I had. I'm going following the shape of the edge, but I'm not doing one long continuous line. If you do it this way, you're not stuck into trying to make a perfect line. Um, I feel like I have a pizza here. It's about the size of a pizza box, actually. Okay, so can you see I'm just kind of doing some little decorative work with this gold paint. I'm going to go across the bottom, but again, not a nice perfect line because that would be a hard thing to do. And so now if we just kind of stop and start and it's got a little bit of a border, but nothing that we're worried about measuring or doing too carefully. I got a little blob here, so let me de-blob it. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of a white highlight. Again, these are all things you could kind of do with your paint markers, too. I did buy some new paint markers, some little, little ones, all colors. Sorry to advertise on Facebook. Had to order. I haven't even tried them yet, but they look pretty cool. So I'll let you know how those are and what the brand is. All right, same idea. A little bit of black and a little bit of white. Let's go into our black. I have it mixed up here with a little water. So at the end, I kind of go and look, and I do a few little, um, you know, something like around the edge here, just a little outline. I'm going to do it on the leaves. I might do this little line. You'll see it's etched in. A little bit of a vein in the leaves. I'm doing it the same way. Press a little bit and come out and lift. You get that nice thin line. I think we'll outline it a little bit too. And again, I'm not worrying about it being perfect. I'm not worrying about being a certain amount of space from the edge or whatnot. It could be thicker and thinner. There. And do the same around here if you want, if you'd like to look. I just kind of did. I just want to add a little pizzazz. I 
All right, now I do the same thing. Let's put a little bit on the glasses, just a teeny bit. And I'm going to put like a little white highlight so they look like they're kind of shiny. And it's just a little bit of an outline. And you can see how I'm just stopping and starting, and I'm not really worrying too much about how it looks. Okay. Just I'm on the outside edge doing a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to do black on the writing. I'm going to do a little bit of white now. So now I'm going to clean my brush out, drag some of that white over, and I've got some clean water here. So I want clean water now. And I'm just, again, just thinning it down a bit to do the detail work. So let me do a little bit of a, you know, kind of a funky little, just something fun on the ears. We did a highlight on the nose. Let's give our little, I'm not going to do it on, the, on here because I have the um, white dots. A little highlight here, maybe. That's got a little bit of a, there. And a little down here, just here and there. I, I have to be careful. It's a little wet here now, so I'm just going to kind of be careful and watch where it's wet and just go around that, maybe. Ah, do a little bit down here. Uh, here and one little thing I'm going to do is back to that gold and because this little dimensional flower is there I'm going to put just a few under here that could almost be like a shadow there good enough and now our glasses the same thing it's not going to show up a lot but a little highlight of white is going to be kind of nice on there just a little just a little highlight here and there. Little touches like this aren't really that noticeable, but they add a little something. Okay. And then it's just the writing here. Let's let him dry for a second right here. And let's see my little photo here. So a little highlight on the letters just here and there. I'm not planning it. It's not perfect. You can use the photo that comes with the kit to go by or this video. You can stop it and just look at the um, the video. I just want to get some little bit of water there. And I'm just really kind of going on the left side of the writing and just doing some little comma strokes almost there. And it just gives a little dimension. Doesn't it make it look like it's a little bit rounded with the highlights? And as easy as that. That's all we need. Like a little... Okay, let's put it together. I'm dying to see it put together. Hi, Sheree. He is cute, right? I've been so excited to uh, paint him. But now I want to see him put together. So let's take a look. Let's get this stuff out of the way. Let's put him together. I don't have the glue here, so I'm not going to hold him up. I'll glue him afterwards. You guys don't need to um, be there for the gluing. Let me move it so you can see most of him, right? And then we're going to glue the blessed right in the middle. And it, you know what? Actually, the yellow and that teal really pops. So I do like that choice of colors. A little rosy bit. And what you can do, it's like a it's like we're doing a puzzle, right? We gotta fit this on like the little kid puzzles, you know. So we're gonna fit that on there. He needs eyes. Upper uh, right is for our highlights, so he's not Marty Feldman. And this is my—I couldn't wait to paint it just for the glasses. Oh my God! Right? Is he not the cutest thing you've ever seen? Yeah. I am going to finish him up. Like I said, I'm going to put a little finish on him when he dries. Um, a Krylon spray, a Mod Podge spray, high gloss. If you like a glossy finish, you can do a matte. You can do a pearlized finish. It could be um, any brand. And if you have a brush on sealer, you can use that too. It doesn't have to be spray. So I'm going to glue them together. I'm going to spray them up. I'm going to glue on the back side after I, these are dry and glued. I'm going to glue on a little sawtooth hanger or a ribbon or a piece of twine just to hang him. Again, he'd be kind of cute with wire, but you'd have to drill a little hole on, the, on him and, and you could do curly wire or something, and a big bow. He could be attached to a wreath. If you had a nice big wreath and you could glue him right on the front or attach him. That would be pretty cool. So anyways, I think that's it. Any questions, put them in the comments. If you're re-watching this later, I'm still watching. Put things in the comments. 
uh, direct message me with anything you need to. I'd love to see your projects. And if you want just the wood piece or a kit, I will absolutely get that to you. So thank you guys for watching and happy spring. I'm going to be popping on doing some more spring projects and I'm going to show you some more cutouts that I have on the page. So I appreciate you guys watching today. Thank you so much. Happy painting and I will see you soon. Bye.